Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, well, Admiral, first of all, I appreciate very much your, the time that you spent with me and with other members of this committee prior to, uh, to this hearing. And, uh, uh, you know, everyone knows how significant this is. And I, I shared with you some personal experiences I've had uh, with the Coast Guard, with what they have done, their expertise in the area that you are going to be involved in. Um, even commenting that when I was had an occasion to fly a little airplane around the world, I, I found myself going from Coast Guard station to Coast Guard station because I, <laughs> that I, I knew what their missions were. And it's so much more than just search and rescue. Mm -hmm. I, I think it'd be worthwhile to run over a few things that the Coast Guard has been doing because before it was popular, they were involved in this field. Uh, so what the Coast Guard has been doing in terms of its mission and then how you, you personally were involved in, in, in that. And then following that up on specifically where, what you were doing on 9-11 and so forth. Let's start with the Coast Guard in general as a training ground for this job. Senator, thanks for the question. I, I think the Coast Guard is actually a, almost a perfect training ground for this job. And if you look at the similarities between what the Coast Guard does and what TSA does, it's striking how similar the organizations are. Both rely on a risk-based approach um, to providing the right resources at the right place at the right time. Uh, both are law enforcement agencies. Uh, both are regulatory agencies. Uh, both are of scale. Um, Coast Guard 50,000 plus individuals all throughout the country, as you mentioned, at, at smaller stations. Um, TSOs uh, and, and, the, and the Federal Security Director staffs all throughout the nation, 440 some odd uh, locations. Um, the um, and, and certainly both in the Department of Transportation, uh, Department of Homeland Security, rather, um, originated in the Department of Transportation. Um, I, I think, too, that um, uh, both organizations rely heavily on intelligence information to kind of get ahead, of, as Senator Booker was mentioning, to get ahead of the next threat so that we're there um, and ready to meet it uh, should it occur. Uh, and so I think really um, from those aspects of similar with the or similarities with the organization, it's a really good fit. Uh, additionally, I would say that um, to go to the chairman's question earlier, when you look at the TSA workforce, how, how can you um, really invest more heavily in that workforce? Um, these uh, folks are on the front line of our operations. In my view, my experience traveling over all the years since TSA has been established is I've never had a bad experience at, at, a, at a security checkpoint. I really respect very much the work that, that our uh, individuals, uh, should I be confirmed in TSA, perform day in and day out. Um, what, what I think is needed, though, is more investment in them as individuals, in their training, and also in leadership overall within the organization. TSA is 16 years old. The Coast Guard is 226 years old. Um, and, and what I bring from the Coast Guard is a perspective of what a culture looks like that can be rapid response to a changing dynamic threat, um, that can empower people at the, at the uh, lowest levels of the organization that are facing the American public and really are, are the ones that, that make the decisions that mean success or failure for your mission overall. Um, and so I'm looking forward to joining the TSA workforce if confirmed as much as I enjoyed working with the Coast Guard workforce, which I enjoyed tremendously. Um, with respect to the, um, um, uh, the public area. Revenue. Sir. Okay. With, re with respect to the public area security, um, TSA, as I understand it, has an initiative to look at public area security overall, uh, has a framework in place to be able to do that, um, and is putting the resources and the time to uh, ensure better coordination um, and, and to ensure some standardization, if you will, across the country at, at some basic level uh, of performance. So I think there's been good work done in that regard as well. Yeah, I was going to ask you uh, to elaborate a little bit on 9-11, what you were yes, doing at that time. And, and, and yes, sir. I was, I was Admiral Loy's executive assistant on 9-11. Uh, and, you know, as we can all remember, it was a beautiful day here in Washington, D.C. Uh, we had several meetings in the morning. Um, literally in the middle of one of those meetings, uh, we got the first reports. It flashed across the TV monitor. Um, and then from there on, it was a full-up response, trying to assess the impact of what was going on. Um, a couple of hours after the first attacks, of course, we heard and saw um, the impact on the Pentagon building. I can remember driving home that night. I lived in Northern Virginia at the time driving right by the Pentagon, and to see the Pentagon um, with, with smoke coming out of, the, out of the structure was incredibly impactful uh, for me because you really got to see and feel exactly what had happened. Um, I learned a lot by watching Admiral Loy and Secretary Mineta 
uh, respond to that incident. I, th I think that uh, they demonstrated what I would hope to be able to demonstrate is uh, in a crisis when you're called on and you have to respond and you have to be really at the top of your profession and doing it, both of those gentlemen were. Yeah, and, 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 and the reason I bring that up because I've also had personal experience yep. uh, in the southern tip of Texas down there and the, there's a, one of your stations. Mm -hmm. Uh, in South Padre Island, Texas, right. and every time we've had a some type of an incident come up or a threat of a terrorist attack or the very thing that you'll be doing in your job, they were the first ones to respond. Right. And I've been down there and I've actually seen them. Uh, my time's expired, but I just uh, one word of caution: uh, there will be a lot of people out there that would like to um, to use an incident that may be isolated where some little old lady's being frisked or something, you know what uh, is gonna happen. And so you're gonna uh, get ready for a media that's not your best friend. They may be now, but they won't be later on as this progresses. Sir. Look forward to working with you. Yes, sir. Thank you, likewise. Thank you, Senator Inhofe. Senator Mastel. Thank you. 